Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how you find the equation of a straight line. Now, in my previous video of how to find the equation of a straight line, we did it from an actual line that was drawn. In these questions here, it's when we've been given a few details and we need to find the equation. So let's get stuck in because there's several different examples to have a look at. So the first one here, I want to work out the equation of a line that passes through this point here, 2, 3, and has a gradient of minus 2. Okay, so hopefully from uh, the first video you remember that the general equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is where the line crosses the y-axis. That's where you need to find out the gradient and the value here, c, where it crosses the y-axis. So the first bit's been done for us, it's really easy. The gradient is minus 2, so that's easy. Let's put that in. y equals minus 2x plus c. Okay, so we're halfway there already. The next thing we need to do is how to find the value c. Now, on the drawing, when we drew the line, it was really easy because we could just see where it crossed the y-axis. However, the only other bit of information we have now is this coordinate, 2, 3. But that's all we need because with a coordinate, you have an x value and you have a y value. Remember, the first one's x and the second one's y. So what we can do is we can substitute those values into this and then we can work out what c is. So let's do that. So y in this case is 3 equals, and then minus 2 times x, well x is 2, and then plus c. A little bit of tidying up and simplifying. Well, minus 2 times 2 is minus 4 plus c. Now you can use the flowchart or the balance method to work this out. I'm going to use the balance method because I want to get rid of that minus 4, so I'm just left with c on its own. So I do the opposite. If I add 4 to both sides, I'm going to have that c equals 7. Once you know that, just come back up to your equation and substitute that in. So y equals minus 2x plus 7. Okay, and there you go. You've just worked out the equation of the line that it wants. Let's have a go at this one then. So it's exactly the same thing. I want to work out the equation of a line that passes through this point and has a gradient of a half. So again, y equals mx plus c. The gradient's already been told for or been given to us, so let's put that in straight away. y equals a half x plus c. Now I want to work out what the y-intercept is, or c. And again, I'm going to use this coordinate. x and y. I'm going to substitute those values into this and then rearrange it to work out what c is. So y is 1, then I've got a half times x, well x is minus 4 plus c. Bit of tidying up and simplifying, a half times minus 4 minus 2 plus c. Okay, again I'm going to use the balance method or you could use the flow chart. But I'm going to use the balance method. If I want to get rid of that minus 2, I do the opposite and add 2 to both sides. So 3 equals c. Okay. Once you do that, don't forget to go back up to the equation. y equals a half x plus 3. Okay. And again, you've just worked out the equation of that line. So something a bit different now. I will now want to work out the equation of a line that is parallel to this line and passes through this point. Now, the rule you need to remember here is that parallel lines have the same gradient. So in this particular case, in this line here, the gradient is 3. So if I want to work out the equation of a line that is parallel, in my equation that I'm trying to work out, the gradient will be 3 as well. So I can put that straight in. y equals 3x plus c. The gradient in that one is 3. Parallel lines have the same gradient. Then it's just the same trick. I'm going to use this coordinate with my x and y value and substitute that into here to work out what c is. So y is minus 5, and then 3 times x, so 3 times 2, plus c. Bit of tidying up, 3 times 2 is 6, plus c. And again, I'm going to use the balance method, so I want to get rid of the 6 from this side, so c is on its own. So I do the opposite and minus 6 to both sides, so minus 11 equals c. Don't forget to go back, so y equals 3x, and we just worked out c to be minus 11, so y equals 3x minus 11. Exactly the same thing with this one here, however, you might notice that at this time it's 6y equals 2x plus 1, so in this case the gradient is not 2. 
Okay, we need to rearrange this to make sure Y is on its own. Okay, so to get Y on its own, at the minute I'm doing six times Y. I just want Y on its own, so I wanna get rid of that six. So I'm gonna divide everything by six, in which case Y equals 2x over 6 plus 1 over 6, in which case the gradient is now 2 sixths, which obviously can be simplified to 1 third. So the gradient of that line is 1 third. Now if I want to work out the equation of a line that's parallel to that, the gradient, which we've just simplified to be 1 third, has to be the same. So let's put that in. y equals 1 third x plus c. Okay, so if you need to do a little bit of rearranging to make it y equals, just do that before you substitute the gradient into your equation. Okay, now we're in business, exactly the same thing. That's my x value, that's my y value, because this is going to go through that coordinate 2, 2. Substitute it in, so y is 2, then it's a third times 2 plus c. Bit of simplifying. So 1 third times 2 is just 2 thirds plus c. Now, you might be able just to do that in your head, 2, take away 2 thirds. Okay, but if you're a little bit unsure, if I've got a bit of space, I'll come over here. If you think of 2 as a fraction, that's going to be 2 over 1. And remember, when you're taking away fractions, you need to have the same denominator. Well, in this case, I'm doing 2 take away 2 thirds, so the denominator, the bottom number there is 3. So I need to change this denominator to be a 3, in which case I do 1 times 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. So I can change the 2 to be 6 over 3, and then obviously then I'll have 2 thirds plus C. So now when I take away 2 thirds, it's really easy. 6 thirds, take away 2 thirds, leaves me with 4 thirds, which is obviously what C equals. Okay, don't forget to put it all back together. So I'm going to have, I'm running out of space here, I'll carry on down here. So y equals 1 third x plus 4 over 3, okay? Now you might want to times everything by 3 here, so then you could also have 3y equals x plus 4. Okay, both of those are exactly the same thing, because that's a, a third, and that's obviously a, th um, so the denominator there is a 3, and the denominator there is a 3, you can times both of them by 3 to have 3y x plus 4. Okay, so that's a bit of a tricky one, but just remember, rearrange it, get the same, uh, get the right gradient, substitute it in, put your coordinates in, and you're in business. Okay, so that's uh, a few when it's giving you the gradient or the parallel, what I want to have a look at now is when you have something like this, where you just have two coordinates, and you need to work out the equation of the line that goes through these two coordinates. Now, of course, you can do a quick sketch and plot it, however, you don't need to. Remember, we have y equals mx plus c. We need to work out the gradient and where it crosses the y-intercept. So I'm going to work out the gradient first. Now hopefully you, from looking at my previous video, you remember that to work out the gradient is the change in y divided by the change in x. So if we have a look at this one, I've got my x value there, y value there, x value there, y value there. So let's have a look at the y values first. From 2 to 4. So what is the change from 2 to 4? Well, it's gone up 2. And then the change in x, well, it's gone from 3 to 4, so it's 1. So the gradient of the line I'm after is 2 over 1, which simplifies to be 2. So let's substitute that in. y equals 2x plus c. Now I need to work out c. So from the previous uh, examples that we've done, we can do that. I've got two coordinates here. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You can choose which other one you want. You'll get the same answer. Uh, I'm going to go with the first one. No particular reason. So let's substitute that in. So y is 2. And then I've got 2 times x. Well, x is 3 plus c. A little bit of tidying. 2 equals 2 times 3, which is 6 plus c. Okay. To get rid of the 6, I minus 6 from both sides. 
So I'm going to have minus 4 equals C. Don't forget to put it back in. So Y equals 2X minus 4. And there we go. There's your answer. Okay, let's have a go at this one then. It's exactly the same thing. I'll work out the gradient first. So let's have a look. What's the change in Y? I'll just label them. X, Y, X, Y. So what's the change from 1 to 10? Well, it's gone up 9. And then the X from 2 to 5, the difference there is 3. Simplify it. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So the gradient here is 3. Let's substitute that into our formula. So Y equals... 3x plus c, and again, you can pick whichever one you want. I'm going to go with 2, 1, just because the numbers are a bit smaller. So I'm going to have 1 equals 3 times 2 plus c. Bit of tidying. 3 times 2 is 6 plus c. And again, I'm going to uh, use the balance method, so I want to get rid of the 6. So I minus 6 to both sides. So 1 take away 6 is minus 5. And that's obviously going to equal C. Don't forget to put it all back in. So Y equals 3X and then minus 5. Okay, which is your equation you're after. Let's have a look at these ones then. So these ones are a little bit trickier, but the process is still the same. I'm still going to work out the gradient. So again, I'll label my X and Y's on my coordinate. Like so. What's the change in Y? Well, from this time I go 5 to 3. So I've actually gone down 2, so minus 2, and then the x values 4 to 8, that's a difference of 4, okay? So minus 2 divided by 4 is just a fraction, just simplify it to be minus a half, and then you're in business. y equals minus a half x plus c. And again, pick whichever coordinate you want, the 4, 5, or the 8, 3. I'm going to do the 4, 5 just because numbers are a bit smaller, but you can do whichever one you wish. So substitute that in. So y is 5 equals minus a half times the 4 plus c. Bit of tidying. Minus a half times 4 is minus 2. And to get rid of that minus 2, I want to do the opposite and add 2 to both sides. So 7 equals c. Don't forget to put it back in. So y equals minus a half x plus the 7 and you're done. Okay, so just be careful with that one. When you're actually going from 5 to 3, you need to say it's minus 2, okay, because it's a decreasing line. Uh, this one here, again, quite tricky. Let's give it a go. So let's work out the gradient. I'll just label my coordinates, x and y. So change in y, well, 2 to 0, that's gone down 2, so minus 2, and then minus 4 all the way up to 6, that's going to be 10. Okay, if you want, if I'm sure about that, just draw a number line. So minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, it's gone up by 10. Simplify that to be minus 1 fifth. Okay, by dividing both top and bottom by 2. Let's put that into our equation. So y equals minus 1 fifth x plus c. And again, pick whichever one you want. I'm going to pick this one just because they're both positive. That's got a negative. It still works, but it's just easier with positive numbers. Also, there's a 0, so again, that's a bit of an added bonus. So 0 equals minus 1 fifth times 6 plus c. So 0 is going to equal well, minus 1 fifth times 6. is just going to be minus 6 fifths plus c. Okay, to get rid of the minus 6 fifths, we do the opposite and add 6 fifths. So 0 plus 6 fifths is obviously going to be 6 fifths, which is C. Don't forget to put it all back in. So I'm going to have Y equals minus 1 fifth X plus 6 fifths. And again, just like in the other example I did there, when you've got the denominator of both being 5, you can times everything by 5 if you wish and have 5y equals minus 1x, or just minus x, plus 6. Okay, so either or should be okay. All right, so hopefully that uh, helps, guys, gives you a few examples and a, a bit of a method there to follow if you're trying to do something similar at home. Cheers.